Hello back and Happy New Year my friends! I am back from the holiday break and we start 2022 with a topic that came up a few times while popping champagne corks to ring in the new year. Does a spoon in the champagne bottle really keep it bubbling? Well, let's grab a cup of coffee or a glass of fizzy if you prefer and science check this myth. Hello there and welcome back to my channel. New year, same science content. Let's dive right into the science of champagne and as always start with the basics. Keeping champagne fizzy is all about preserving bubbles. But why does it have bubbles in the first place? Why does champagne make bubbles? The gas responsible for producing bubbles in champagne or any other alcoholic fizzy drink is carbon dioxide and alcoholic is the key here. In champagne, carbon dioxide is produced by fermentation in the sealed bottle. Fermentation is basically yeast munching away on sugars from the grapes and meanwhile forming ethanol and carbon dioxide as a result. But you might ask, carbon dioxide is a gas and the wine in the bottle that gets fermented is a liquid. How does that work? Because the fermentation is done in a sealed bottle, the CO2 gas that forms can't escape and therefore progressively dissolves into the wine. It's a principle in physics called Henry's Law that defines that the CO2 in the wine and the gaseous CO2 under the cork slowly form an equilibrium. The dissolved CO2 in champagne, on the other hand, forms in some parts carbonic acid by reacting with the water, which leads to the pH of the champagne being relatively low, around 3.2, making it taste slightly acidic. If you now uncork your champagne bottle, the CO2 in gas form escapes. So this equilibrium, the balance between dissolved and gaseous CO2 is broken. Now, there's too many carbon dioxide molecules dissolved in the liquid. It is super saturated. To get back to the stable balance state, the dissolved carbon dioxide molecules must escape into the atmosphere above it. And it does that by forming bubbles, little amounts of CO2 in gas form rising to the surface in an attempt to form a new equilibrium. Even more CO2 escapes when you pour your champagne into glasses, which is why you should always pour into a tilted glass instead of a vertical one to retain more carbon dioxide. Researchers in France even proved this by looking with IR cameras at escaping CO2 while pouring champagne into different oriented glasses. To come to a perfect balance, your fizzy drink is basically trying to get rid of any dissolved CO2, which is why it will taste flat if it's left out in the open for long enough. So what is there to do to prevent this from happening? The myth of the teaspoon. Where this technique of putting a teaspoon, or in fact any kind of metal made cutlery, into the neck of a champagne bottle to keep it fizzy comes from is unknown. The theory behind it is that the spoon with the handle first in the neck of the champagne bottle acts as a temperature regulator. It is supposed to absorb the warm air from the neck of the bottle, making the air around the teaspoon colder. Colder air is more dense, so it forms a kind of natural air stopper, preventing the CO2 gas from escaping. Or so the story goes. But what does the science say? Does this really work? The key study looking into this phenomenon was published in the periodical Le Vigneron Champenois, the champagne wine grower in English, in 1994. The article titled Le Myth de la Petite Cuillère, the myth of the teaspoon, was designed to check if the claim that a teaspoon could in fact defy all the laws of physics and possess some legendary efficiency to protect the bubbles escaping from an open bottle. At least that's my attempt of translation. The researchers in the study actually looked at three strategies to assess the impact of bubble conservation in champagne. They looked at the change in pressure, the change in weight, and they did a sensory analysis. So what exactly did they do? After opening a bottle of champagne, they decanted most of it, leaving 500 milliliter in the first set and 250 milliliter in the second set in the bottle. The vines were then stored at 12 degrees Celsius, testing four methods for bubble conservation. Number one, the open bottle, nothing added. Number two, with a silver spoon inserted handle first in the neck. Number three, with a cork stopper that uses an hermetic seal inserted. 
And number four, with a crown seal, like you find on beer bottles. Each of those approaches were performed in triplicate. And what did they find? First, let's look at the pressure. The researchers analyzed how the pressure in the bottle changed, measured in atmospheres. The initial pressure in the unopened bottle was six atmospheres. After decanting, the 500 milliliter remaining bottle pressure dropped to four atmospheres, while the pressure in the 250 milliliter remaining bottle was just two atmospheres. After 48 hours of storage, the open bottle and the one with the teaspoon in it had dropped by a further 50% in both sets, which indicates a significant loss of our pressured CO2 bubbles. The cork and crown sealed bottles only showed a pressure drop of around 10%, so clearly with regard to pressure, the teaspoon has no beneficial effect. But how about the weight? For both cork and crown sealed bottles, no decrease in weight was observed, while the fully open bottle, as well as the one with the teaspoon in it, lost a significant amount of weight, up to 1.2 grams after 48 hours. Finally, all wines were subjected to a sensory analysis by expert champagne testers. Not a bad job, if you ask me. It is to note that all wines showed characteristics of oxidation due to oxygen getting into the bottle when it was first opened and decanted. However, those sealed with a hermetic seal were clearly described as more effervescent and livelier than the unsealed bottle or the bottle with the inserted teaspoon. So in summary, the teaspoon effect is a total urban myth and scientifically not approved. Okay, teaspoons and other cutlery items don't help us in preserving bubbles. It is a better idea to invest in a proper sparkling wine bottle stopper if you run into the situation of a half-empty open champagne bottle to store often. But what can we do once our champagne has gone flat? Raisins to the rescue! One of the most common urban myths about reviving flat sparkling wine is dropping a raisin in the glass. Champagne will lose its fizz in as short amount of time as four to five hours. The promise of this myth is that champagne that started to lose its fizz but isn't gone completely flat like still wine can be revived by adding a single raisin to it. And indeed, this works. But why? Any sparkling wine losing its fist to the eye still has some amount of dissolved carbon dioxide in it. The longer the wait after opening the bottle, the less CO2 remains. When the raisin is dropped into the champagne, the remaining carbon dioxide will adhere to the ridges on the raisin and then release into the liquid as bubbles, restoring the fizz and making your glass of champagne almost as effervescent as before. In summary, the raisin addition to revive your sparkling wine is true scientifically approved. Now let's summarize what the science says with a few tips. Sparkling tips. Number one, always pour your champagne in a tilted glass. By the way, the best glass to enjoy both the smell and taste, so the nose and the body of the champagne, is a so-called tulip glass, which is a bit shorter than a traditional flute and slightly inwards curved at the top. Number two, always wipe your glass with a cotton cloth before pouring champagne in it. The bubbles that make up the nose of the champagne when drinking it and make it look fizzy in the glass form on remaining cellulose fibers cast from paper or cloth when wiped. Those trap tiny pockets of air when the flute is filled with sparkling wine and additionally act as a heterogeneous nucleation site, the so-called bubble nursery. If your glass would be perfectly clean, your champagne would look just like normal still wine. Number three, if your champagne ever gets really flat, try adding a raisin into the glass. The remaining carbon dioxide in your sparkling wine will attach to its ridges and then release itself back into the champagne as bubbles, making your drink at least a bit fizzy again. Number four, if you ever need to store a partly used bottle, use a proper sparkling wine stopper. The teaspoon won't help. And number five, Always store your bottles in the fridge or under cool conditions. CO2 is more soluble in wine at lower temperatures, so keeping your champagne in the fridge is always beneficial to the fizziness. I hope you enjoyed our little science check. If you have more comments that you want to check if they get scientific approval, write them in the comments below. I see you back here in two weeks for the next video, and until then, as always, stay sciencey.